Hello, my name is Elizabeth Widener, and I am the Youth in Action winner in the Pillar Area Civic Engagement. The 4-H Youth in Action program recognizes 4-Hers who are making a positive impact in their communities, in the areas of agriculture, civic engagement, healthy living, and STEM. I was recognized for my Children's Miracle Network amenity drive. You have cancer. January 20th, 2016. The day my life changed forever. I was having pain in my hip for a long time. And that day, we finally got our answers. Cancer. The official diagnosis was stage four high-risk neuroblastoma a cancer of the central nervous system. High risk meant that it had metastasized, covering about 95% of my body. I had cancer in my bone marrow, lesions on top of the bones, and a tumor estimated to be the size of a softball in my abdomen. Neuroblastoma usually affects infants to five-year-olds. I had just turned 12 earlier that month. Why me? I thought over and over again. Why is this happening to me? Suddenly everything was in question. Overnight, my doctor laid out a treatment plan and it was extremely overwhelming. Hospital stays after hospital stays, chemo, surgery, transplant, radiation, and immunotherapy. 18 months of my life suddenly upended. Immediately, I began thinking of how I was going to balance school and treatment. When I would hang out with my friends, how I could still participate in dance and theater. I was really looking forward to junior high cheerleading tryouts that spring. I just wanted to be a kid. Kids shouldn't have to worry about dying. That thought was suddenly on everyone's minds. I just wanted to be normal again. I suddenly felt like my life was spinning out of control. No one my age understood what was happening to me and it was frustrating. How many of you know someone who is fighting cancer? Do you know of anyone in junior high? A sibling, a classmate, a cousin, a neighbor? Adult cancers and childhood cancers, as I quickly learned, are entirely different. It's like comparing apples and oranges. Let me tell you, it's really hard going to school and you are the only one there with a bald head, especially when junior high girls can be awfully mean. It can be particularly difficult to navigate teenage years but it's even harder when you have, when you have a life-threatening illness. Needless to say, I did make it to cheerleading tryouts that spring. I might have lied to my oncology nurses so that I could get discharged that morning. We barely crossed the state line when I started getting sick. My mom kept trying to talk to me on the way back home, but I told her to just stop because if I opened my eyes or my mouth, I would vomit. After the two hour drive home, it was all hands on deck. My older brother put my wig on. My mom styled it. My little brothers went over the chants and cheers and dad helped me get cleaned up. With the face mask on, I did everything that was asked of me. Jumps, splits, belting cheers and chants. Then I would puke in the hallway and sleep in the teacher's lounge during breaks. I gave everything I had, making the team and a return trip to the hospital less than 24 hours later. The nurses just shook their heads. That's what you call intestinal fortitude. Throughout everything, 4-H was my constant. During my bone marrow transplant, I had 4-H to lean on. I thankfully was still able to participate in the county fair with the help of technology and fellow 4-H friends and staff who are willing to work with me. 
Fast forward five years, who would have thought 2020 would bring about full circle what I had been doing years ago? Attending fairs, as well as school online. One project I remember in particular was health, which is kind of ironic since I was showing my project from a hospital bed. Even though I wasn't there in person, I still qualified for state and used the same method of technology at the Illinois State Fair with the help from people like Effingham 4-H Youth Coordinator, Patty Logan, Dan Jennings, and Judy Bingham, earning myself the coveted purple ribbon. This gave me hope that even if I was fighting for my life, cancer wouldn't be able to stop me from doing the things I aspired to do. It had taken a lot from me, but I learned in transplant that if I worked hard enough and focused my mind on something, I could accomplish anything, no matter the circumstances. One major goal that I had always wanted to achieve was Junior Miss Effingham County Fair Queen. I ran in 2015, six months prior to my diagnosis, placing second runner up. Excited, I set the goal to come back the following year to compete again. But then I received my diagnosis. And as I said before, the untimely scheduling of my bone marrow transplant required me to become an honorary contestant in 2016, watching via technology from a St. Louis transplant unit. I then set my sights on running in 2017. It was my last chance before I would age out. I went to every practice, working on honing my public speaking and interview skills, and mastered my walk. Throughout this, my confidence steadily grew. I had long since tossed my wig. If I was going to compete, I was doing it on my own terms, not the ideals of what everyone perceived a pageant contestant should look like. I ended up winning, and the night I was crowned, I was determined to use my crown as a platform to advocate and inform the public about childhood cancer. I didn't do it just for me, but for every young woman whose life has been challenged by a disease, especially cancer. Crowns fight cancer, just a girl changing the world, one rhinestone at a time, slowly began to take shape. I'm not going to lie. It was hard to speak about my journey at first. I was ashamed of myself because I had lost my beautiful, long, wavy, beach blonde hair due to chemotherapy, and I thought my whole identity was wrapped up in hair. I later realized this was false. I thought that I was too young for adults to listen or to take me seriously. I was just scared in general. But I remembered the public speaking skills I had learned through 4-H and used them when I would speak at various Relay for Lifes in Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. I filmed an award-winning documentary, The Promise, The Truth Behind Child to Cancer, meetings with our governor, local and state elected leaders, addressing congressional representatives in Washington, D.C., high-ranking officials at the FDA, and the National Institute of Health, and giving television and radio interviews. I also used the leadership skills that I had learned as a junior leader in the Country Cousins 4-H Club and as president of the Happy Hopper Spin Club to encourage youth and adults in Effingham County and the surrounding areas who are survivors, warriors, or caregivers to speak about their journeys and experiences raising more awareness and informing the public that childhood cancer is not rare so that action could be taken. Without awareness, action on any issue will not be as successful as one might hope. In today's society where social media is prevalent, teenagers at every level can be influencers within their community. Social media offers easy ways to show support for an issue raise money, promote an event, or spread an important message that you care about? What is something that you are passionate about or have an emotional connection to? Because of my journey, I have made it my mission to advocate for those that can't advocate for themselves. 
the unborn, young children, individuals too traumatized by their own journeys to speak, even as adults, about the need for effective change, or those that have passed. I use social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook to share photos from my hospital stays or when I'm in pain. Call on our nation's leaders to pass important healthcare legislation and to promote organizations I am involved in, such as the American Cancer Society's hashtag Gold Together program and the American Childhood Cancer Organization. The public perception of how children battle cancer is much different than the reality of the battle. How can you implement the cause or issue that you are most passionate about in your community? After long stays in the hospital, I would run out of necessities like soap, shampoo, snacks, etc. So I started a Children's Miracle Network amenity drive. Many families in our area have spent time in a CMN hospital. Donating these supplies to five children's hospitals in three states enables families to only worry about what is most important, the child. To date, with the help of 4-Hers like you, I've collected over 80,000 items, partnering with hotel chains, businesses, community groups, and random strangers. I have been sent hospital donations from literally all over the world. I want you to think about what you are most passionate about and try to execute a project that would benefit your community. I believe everyone has the ability to make a positive impact and that can start with you. Great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, always about the goal. I wasn't born to lead. I didn't set out to be a leader. But once my life was affected by cancer, I knew I had to make a change. Honestly, I appreciate every award, crown, or title I have earned. But the thing I care about the most is finding a cure for pediatric cancer. I can't do it alone. So I have enlisted the help of the organizations that I am involved in, like CureFest, 4-H, FFA, Ronald McDonald Houses, and partnered with Climb for the Kids, filming a second documentary, which will debut in December, called Switching the Summit, to assist me in spreading the word, which will hopefully get me to my end goal, living in a world without cancer. Examine your passion. Examine the issues in your community or what is near and dear to your heart. Examine your influence. Now go, make a difference, change the world because you can do anything if you put your mind to it. You got this. If you are interested in helping with my amenity drive, you can contact me on Instagram or Facebook at Crowns Fight Cancer. If you have any questions for me, comment below and I will gladly answer them. Thank you so much.